Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Now, uh, as many of you know, if you've been following me for a while, what I love to do is try and find you techniques that will save you a few pennies, particularly if you are new to paper crafting. Now, you'll see this in a recent video of mine, which I'll link up here, and that was um, finding a different way of foiling without using a foiling machine. And I know lots of you love that. I'm hoping some of you are going to love this. Now, I just want to say this is never going to be as good as uh, buying the machine that this technique replicates. So um, if you're going to go for a Spellbinders Better Press, this is no way going to be as good as that. But if you're on the fence about getting one, if you've never tried the letter press technique within paper crafting before, or maybe you just don't have the budget for a machine like that at the moment, then hopefully this video will help you out a little bit to uh, get trying letterpress technique because it is a technique that I've been doing for a long, long time with my usual cutting dies and I'm sure you can too with what you have at home. So we're going to use, as I said, cutting dies. Now these are two that I've just chosen for my textures range. They have quite a lot of detail in them. This is definitely a technique where you want to be looking at your more detailed dies to get the best results. I have got my uh, layering flowers and panel die set from my recent floral folk art collection and I'll use this first and then going right back to one of my first collections I've got the textured heart nested die set and I'm going to be using the detail die. If you have dies, cutting dies such as this one which actually have embossing detail in them as well that's going to be absolutely perfect. So something else you're going to need to do this technique and that's rubber mats. Now I've got uh, a couple here to show you. A lot of die cutting machines will come with rubber mats in the box and what I used to do um, a while ago when I used to have die cutting machines at home when I was just doing this really as a hobby is I would almost ignore the rubber mats. I didn't know what I was using them for. They may be called embossing mats, they may be called tan mats. There's lots of different names for them. Effectively, the, the flexible rubber mat that you get. Now, some machines even come with two thin ones, so you can vary the uh, pressure needed, and then some might come with one thicker one, and they will vary in color. Um, we also used these when we did the foiling technique too. So take yourself a rubber mat. You may need to purchase one separately but they're not much money at all. Um, I prefer to use the thicker mat rather than the thinner one. If I'm going to use a thin one and I've got more than one of them, then I would use two of these layered together. Now, in I'm going to be working in a Sizzix Big Shot for this. If you're working in a different machine, um, to get the correct pressure, you may need to alter the plates and have a play with it, but I definitely recommend have a play. Get out all of your dies, particularly your detailed ones, and just have a little bit of a crafting session and see what results you get with this. So the first thing we're going to do is put our packets away and let's look at our first die, which is this gorgeous circular panel here. Um, I really, really love this die anyway, but the result is stunning. Now you're going to want a piece of scrap paper, and I've just got here a piece of copy paper. So let's just grab that and put that under here. Now, ink choices for your letterpress technique, you can use literally any ink. I'm going to be doing this twice for you, once with Memento, something like Versafine would also work, and I'm also going to be doing it a second time with Oxides, just to show you kind of the difference so you can see that. So the first thing I'm going to do is ink up my die. If you've never inked your dies before, honestly, you're missing out on a wonderful technique. And of course, results will vary with every die, every type of paper and every type of ink. So you'll very rarely get the same result twice. If you want a lot of definition around the edges of your die cuts, this is a really good way of doing it. Ink your die before you actually cut it, properly cut it, and you'll get some inked edges to your cut line. So there's another technique you can try, but we're just looking at letterpress today. It is an age old technique. I adore traditional letterpressing. I've been along to traditional um, letterpress studios, which are not too far from me and watched them work all day. I think it's fascinating. So uh, years ago when I found out I could get a similar result using my cutting dies, I was absolutely blown away. And I, I'll be honest, it's one of those techniques that I 
kind of forgot about for a little while until I saw the Spellbinders Better Press recently and all the hype about it. And I do think it's an amazing machine and creates absolutely fantastic results. But I did remember that um, I could do this sort of technique at home and I wanted to show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some plates from my die cutting machine. Now, again, you may want to experiment with your plates and your machine. So I've taken out the thinner plate if i just show you from my big shot i've got the and i do have this in my big shot plus as well the thin turquoise thin die adapter i take this out of my sandwich and i put my rubber mat in now i'm using a tan rubber mat it's a little bit thicker than the thinner black ones we saw as i said i'd use two thin black ones otherwise i'm putting that down onto my plate there so onto one of my clear plates I'm then going to put some cardstock down. Now I would suggest using a thicker cardstock, something like 250 GSM plus, because you don't want to cut through the cardstock. And that's going to go onto the rubber mat. Now I've inked up this. Um, that was a little while ago, but I know the ink's not going to dry on the metal very quickly at all, if ever really. Um, so I'm going to carefully lift that off of my paper and this is why we do it on paper if i did it on here a i'd get ink on my table but also i'd struggle to lift the die up now you just want to grip the die around the edge and gently place that down onto your cardstock i'd suggest doing it onto a larger piece of cardstock than you want to use on your final project just in case you don't get it perfectly positioned the first time and then your clear plate's going to go on top now when you put your clear plate on top, again, be careful not to move the die on the paper. So I'm sliding it to the edge of my table so I can pick it up and grip it. And I'm going to now just run this through my die cutting machine. So let's just bring this into shot a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Now, as this goes through, you should be able to feel a reasonable, reasonable amount of pressure. I'm going to go forward and back again but not too much we're not hearing any cracking or creaking we're not getting any cutting through now in just the same way as we put it into our die cutting machine we want to be careful about taking it out as well so lifting up the top plate and then I'm carefully just going to press on one side so that another edge lifts up and take that off now look at this that is absolutely stunning so so beautiful not only do we have the ink embedded into our cardstock we also have it literally embedded because we've got hopefully you can see the texture we've got there if I turn this over you if I hold that there we go hopefully you can see that where that's pressed into the cardstock so we've got this gorgeous letterpress technique now as you can see I'm running my hands over it I'm not smudging the ink or anything that is just absolutely beautiful and it's got this luxurious feel because we've created a little bit of shape and dimension in our cardstock there isn't that just beautiful now I did say I was going to show you this again with um, distress oxide which I'll do now so again bringing in a scrap piece of paper and the die I'm choosing for this one is a slightly smaller die as I say from this pack the reflections one I've chosen the heart and this one has got some embossed detail. So you'll be able to see the difference. And just for a little bit more difference, I'm actually going to be inking this in two different colors. So just with my Distress Oxides, ink the bottom half in a purple, and I try to use stronger colors when I'm doing a letterpress technique. I just think it stands out a bit better. Just making sure that I've definitely got uh, ink over all areas of the die. I'm not sure if I captured this edge. I think so. There we go. Okay, so again, I'm lifting my paper up so that I can kind of slide it onto my hand and that way I'm not touching anything that's, um, any of the ink that's on there. So sort my sandwich out again. It's a good idea to have this ready first. Place that onto my rubber mat, just carefully gripping the very edge of the die there with my hands and placing this down, dropping it carefully onto the cardstock. Now, you don't want that to move as you put it on. So once it's on there, just make sure all your pl plates are al aligned. But the last thing you want to do is be moving the die on the paper. Again, putting this on carefully, making sure it's aligned so you don't have to move it once it's on there. 
slide it so I can pick it up without anything budging and I'm running this through once more so just forwards and back you don't need to go slowly really with this you don't need um, to be that careful with it once it's in and it's gripped it's not going anywhere so let's lift this up and you see again the effect and this time we've got the ombre effect isn't that just gorgeous so it's all embedded into the cardstock now this is what i wanted to show you with this particular die is we've obviously used a much darker ink at the top than the bottom so i used wilted violet and pine needles but you can see in the bird's wings and in the centers of the flowers there that's where the embossed detail is on the die and that's where you've got those solid areas now some dies do actually have they're really clever so these are solid dies okay some dies will be sort of more detailed but more open and they'll actually have a nice design on the reverse of them and it's well worth you having a go at your letterpress technique with the reverse of the die applying the ink but hopefully that has helped you learn a new technique that you can take away and use within your crafting. Make use of your cutting dies, use them as stamps and use them as letter presses because why not? We spend lots of money on our craft items and we want to make sure we get the very most out of them. So I hope you've enjoyed this technique. Please do give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment if you have. And I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because there'll be lots more videos like this coming up again very soon. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again soon.